A few years ago, Tesla changed the way it built electric cars. It initiated the structural battery pack. In other words, using the structure of the battery of the frame of the car sort of as the pack structure, the battery pack structure. And it made sense. In fact, many manufacturers have copied them. Almost everyone has now. It was a really good idea at the time. It also enabled you to fit more batteries into the same space because a lot of battery packs, a lot of it is kind of useless, not, not exactly useless, but it could be much more efficiently used. And that's where an American battery company, which is actually a very big one, say that they have thought up a new way to enable electric cars to get 1,000 miles of EV range or 1,600 kilometers of range. Is this realistic and could this happen? Well, actually it could. This could be a new innovation in battery tech and it's achievable. This is not some sort of miraculous solid state battery tech. It's nothing fanciful. I think it actually could start some serious changes in the way that companies build their EVs. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Cell to pack. Chinese manufacturers and different brands have made up all these new names for it. I don't like that. I think it's just, it confuses customers. They hear all these CTB things like what BYD made up. And to be honest, to, not just going after BYD, many brands have done this, made their own names up, which just confuse people. It's like, okay, we all know what it is. It's a structural battery pack, but no new customers don't have any idea what that means. And they hear this jargon from their brands. So structural battery packs are a really good idea, but 24M, the US company, say they've got a, a better idea, which would enable far more range from the same space. So to give you an idea of what is actually happening right now, many car makers skip the step of having battery modules and they integrate battery cells directly into um, the battery, well, a larger pack, which makes up the frame of the car. And Massachusetts-based 24M Technologies has, while well, taken this to an entirely new level, they are developing a new electrode to pack or ETOP method to enhance both energy efficiency and cost effectiveness. And I think it's actually quite a good idea. The company says traditional cell and module designs contain a large portion of inactive and non-energy carrying materials like the cylindrical cell casing of batteries. Its ETOP manufacturing platform on the other hand, integrates electrodes, the components that store and release energy directly into the pack. This eliminates the need for the plastics and metals used in traditional battery cell casings. And it's actually taken my brain a little while to kind of reimagine what this means. It's an entirely new paradigm. By eliminating any hardware that isn't actively involved in storing energy, you can pack more energy into a given space. And that obviously improves energy density and range without, you know, obviously I'm stating the obvious here. But the thinking behind cell to pack designs is, well, very different to what 24M is proposing. 24M said its new platform uses a sealed anode and cathode pair that's integrated directly into the battery pack, eliminating the need for individual cells or modules. In theory, the majority of battery volume would actually consist of active energy carrying components, which would increase energy density and boost range. And in theory, this sounds completely logical. In traditional lithium ion batteries, the electrodes comprise about 30 to 60% of a battery's volume, according to 24M. The rest is taken up by inactive materials, which include structural and supporting components that do not store energy, but are still essential to making the battery work safely. With an electrode to pack design, 24M say the active electrode materials can account for up to 80% of the battery's volume. So potentially double, or even maybe not far off being triple, the amount of energy density in a battery pack is what 24M are saying is possible. Now that doesn't mean the energy density is necessarily gonna be triple, but you know, probably around double, which is massive. 
24M say that will allow a range of 1,000 miles per charge, which is obviously around, what, double the range of the best EVs you can get today. The pressure to compete on price, design, and performance is mounting for American industries that are heavily reliant on imported batteries, said 24M. The US must advance battery innovation, not just scale production, to close the gap with competitors overseas. The company is saying this technology will help America, will help them, combat the Chinese. As Chinese battery makers are obviously innovating very, very quickly, they are making batteries extremely cheaply, and obviously they now have sodium mine batteries. That said, the US is also making their own sodium mine battery cells as well, and I talked about that in a separate video. These batteries apparently are well suited for electrical vertical takeoff and landing EV toll aircraft, so electric aircraft, but the design flexibility and ability to integrate any battery chemistry, size, or voltage means they could be developed for everything from grid batteries to electric vehicles. Now, I don't see it ever happening for grid batteries. Grid batteries, this doesn't matter. Like, yeah, size does matter, but not all, not enough to really bother with the, the amount of money you'd need to invest to make these work for grid-scale batteries. For electric cars, that's an entirely different story. And I think that this, this idea could potentially work. However, the big challenge is this, scale. The existing battery supply chain and infrastructure already built around conventional cells. Lithium ion phosphate, prismatic batteries, obviously cylindrical batteries, NMC batteries quite commonly. Um, that's not always the case, but I'm giving you, the, you know, what is usually the case. And retooling factories for a completely different process would be very, very expensive. It would have to really be worth it. 24M says that there are some other advantages which could make it worth it. Modern batteries, they say, defects can often be isolated to a single cell without jeopardizing the entire pack. In a fully sealed pack, though, defects can't really be diagnosed. So, I mean, 24M is basically proposing what it sounds like a great idea, but the thing is, how would you be able to fix one of these battery packs if something goes wrong? I mean, if something goes wrong, does that mean the entire pack is dead? Like if there's no actual individual cells or individual uh, modules, does that mean you can't replace an individual cell? No one knows. I've got no idea how that would actually work. I so I. However, though, I do think this idea is great. I think that um, it makes sense as long as they can figure out a way to be able to fix the battery pack without having to just kind of recycle the entire thing if there is a major defect in one part of the pack. What do you guys think? Does this sound like a good idea? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.